Have you ever been stuck in this situation where your child absolutely refuses to do homework or even will flat out tell you there is no homework just to get a little surprise uh, call from the school later down the road? That's the reality we're going to be talking about today. So for those who don't know me, my name is Danielle C. Baker. I am the founder and CEO of being connected. I am an early childhood educator and I over 20 years experience in the fields. I'm right now specializing in effective value-based parenting and I help parents navigate their realities uh, with their role as a parent. So one thing though, don't get it twisted when you work with me, we're putting your child's needs first. You are the adult, you're supposed to be able to handle this. Your child cannot yet. So your child needs first. So put your ego and pride aside and let's get to it. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Talk to Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle C. Baker. And before we get started, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to whichever channel you're listening or watching from. And of course, with season two, this episode is brought to you by the Self-Esteem Doctor Online Academy with the wonderful, beautiful, amazing Dr. Simone Alicia, who has this online academy that is jam-packed with resources, workshops, and programs to help your child with self-esteem confidence so much more I know she's got stuff for children teenagers and even it works for adults I you I I've kind of browsed through as well so I'm going to leave the link for the online academy in the description be sure to uh, have a look at it because uh, there's a lot of stuff in there with the work that I do that I think is just a wealth of resources with the self-esteem doctor online academy so check that out and now, this is the third episode that I'm doing on this. Um, I've decided to use this platform to kind of start talking about the hard stuff, the things that that's, I've worked in school settings and daycares for 20 years uh, this year. I started in 2004, so it means I started when I was four years old, right? Uh, <laughs> but no, seriously. Uh, we've you know, we get trained as early childhood educator. I am a registered early, early childhood educator. We are trained on childhood development, on child, on the cognitive, on the, all the five sp spheres. So there's cognitive, emotional, social, all that fun stuff. Physical. Um, though textbooks are great, but they don't work on real life children most of the time. So parents will come to us, ask for it. If you're already in survival mode, you don't know what to do. Your child has these behaviors that are driving you up the walls. And you you go to people who are trained in this, asking for help. And the way you just got crickets. Or they're, like, they're just very quick to, to assume that there is an underlying uh, diagnosis somewhere. That's not generally the case. Most of the time, it's just that we're, we're not quite sure how we can teach our children to manage their emotions in a healthy way. Because we were not taught. How to, let's get real here. We were definitely not taught how to handle our emotions in a healthy way. Our parents were not either. Uh, and then I'm all about breaking these generational cycles and patterns of, well, I'm doing this because that's how it was when I was growing up. And that's the worst excuse you could ever give as a parent. I'm doing this. How well did that work for you, really? <laughs> you know, let's, let's get real on this one. I said about ego and pride. Yeah. Okay, you've never had an issue. You never thought about, you know, what life would be without your parents. You were never, you know, can't wait till I grow up and I can leave. And come on, let's get real here. So positive discipline, positive reinforcement is still kind of laughed at. And people get very upset at the fact that we could raise our children in a healthy way instead of a terrifying way that, you know, if we're too soft with our children, we're going to ruin the civilization. And, uh, you know, stop and think of it in a second, the way that we were raised and negative discipline and the way our parents were raised and our grandparents and how well is our world doing right now, right? If it was so great, shouldn't we not have any issues by now? So uh, don't get me wrong on this. And I'm going to be like full disclosure here. 
I did not believe in positive discipline growing up. I did not believe in positive discipline when I was raising, when I became a mother. I'm from the old way of disciplining children. So I, I'm kind of <clears throat> still kicking myself for it now. But uh, it's working with other people's children that help me see the benefits of positive discipline. And I, I say that often. Um, other people's children. <laughs> when I work with other people's children, I, I do a phenomenal job. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna toot my own horn here. I am amazing at what I do and I am very aware of it. I have a lot of experience and my experience comes from experience, not from reading books. I'm the one who rolls around on the carpet and in the sandbox. I'm the one that gets puked on and bitten and scratched and I've gone through all of it with thousands and thousands of children. So that's where my experience comes from. I do have a diploma on the wall, but honestly, it's not the diploma did not help me get to where I am today. It's working with other people's children. That I'm in. And the reason why I say that is because when it comes to your own children, you are emotionally invested. You will react a lot stronger with your own children. You can work on it, but it's easier when you're working with other people's children to really come in as an observer, a third party, look at the bigger picture because I'm not in it as much as, as uh, the actual parents. Um, so today we're gonna talk about how to use positive discipline, positive reinforcement. When your kids don't wanna do their homework, but they're giving you such a hard time in getting the homework done. Now, I've talked about positive discipline because this is a separate um, episode. I'm going to briefly, briefly talk about what positive discipline is. And I have my notes here just so I don't forget. There are three steps to this positive discipline. And before you can even start, you need to realize that the whole point is before you can even start, you need to align yourself with your child. You need to tune in with your child. So you need to kind of assess the situation, whatever it is. Today is going to be homework, but I, I've talked about a child that hits and siblings that are constantly bickering. Uh, you walk in and you're all like, <clears throat> again, you know, this child is starting to be crazy. Look at all this gray hair. I mean, come on, right? <laughs> you're going in, trying to take a step back and look at the bigger picture because right now you're just focused on the problem because it's a problem for you. You're not even on your child's problems yet. You're on your own problems. So you need to, to tune into your child and go, okay, what's really happening? There are three things, three elements to positive discipline. The first one is you're going to have to listen to your child. Now, okay, before you cut me off, before you turn off this episode, just hear out the three, because it's the third one that will put it all together. So you're going to have to listen attentively. Don't put words, don't assume what's happening, because there's a really good chance the reason why it's happening is not at all the reason that you're thinking. Listen attentively, and then you're going to have to validate the emotions of your child. Why don't they want to do their homework? Why are they hitting? Why are they fighting with their, their, uh, their sibling? So you're going to have to listen attentively and validate your emotions. And this is where people get completely turned off of positive discipline. Because go on, again, you're all in you. You're not even thinking about your child's emotions. You're in your own emotions. So this is why it doesn't work. If you can't get past those two, to be able to get those two to work, you need to do the third step. The third step is how are you reacting to the situation? And I always name that last, because if I said it first, it's okay, your child doesn't want to do their homework. Your child is constantly hitting you. How are you reacting? How are you coming into this conflict, into this situation? Don't forget that children learn from example. They don't learn from words. You could tell your kids to behave well, but if you're not showing it, physically, through your actions, they're not learning anything. So how are you coming in? If you're coming in hot and they're hot, how are you, what are you teaching them? What are you teaching them if you're coming in hot when they're already hot? So the one thing you do once you assess, all right, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna pause. You don't react, you pause. You could walk in, like, mm, 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 but you pause, you stop. This is going to do two things. You, I love 
the power that pause has. Yelling, blaming, shaming, humiliating, embarrassing, those are all the beautiful parenting ways of disciplining our children we've had. Um, the, the, our, our kids are tooting us out. They're not even listening to us because they're in their own emotion. Their, their brain, the part of the brain that's activated right now cannot listen to you. They're in their basic emotions. They're trying to figure this out. And you embarrassing them is not going to make it better. Pause. You're not reacting. You pause. Now, the reason why this is so effective is because everybody is uncomfortable with a pause. If you've ever been in a meeting, try this in a meeting and pause for 30 seconds. Okay, we're not going to do 30 seconds. I did this in the other two uh, video episodes. So have a look at that. But for those who are watching the video, you're just going to see me staring at you through the camera. <laughs> for those who are just listening on an audio, it's going to get really awkward. Because you're going to be like, is something wrong with my phone? Is there something wrong with my headset? <laughs> you know, but I'm going to pause for five seconds first. So you get a feel for it. Okay, so here we go. That was five seconds. That was a little awkward, especially like dead air is one of the worst things you could possibly do when you're recording. Now let's go for 10 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna stop for 10 seconds. Just pause. There it is. I was like, imagine 30 seconds. Uh, everybody gets uncomfortable with a pause. So a pause will stop everybody. So if your child is doesn't want to do homework, they're expecting you to come in hot and start yelling at them and, and you know humiliate them and, and all of that fun stuff. So you walk in to the room where you just stand in front of them and just stop. And pause and trust me, they're holding a pen. I am all, I'm constantly fidgeting. I'm, 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 I've got a lot of stimming. So I stim all the time. So, you know, you get to see that if you're watching the video, I'm twirling, or those who are not watching the video, I'm twirling the pen I have in my hand right now. They're going to start kicking the leg. Of the, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff there that's going on. They're not going to know how to handle that. So the pause is very effective to get them to stop. Um, the other reason why it's effective is because it's going to get you to stop, to, to calm down, because you need to calm down. That's the first thing you're going to have to do. Um, if you're coming in hot and you can't handle the situation properly, you're not in the right headspace to reason in an appropriate way with your child. You're meeting your child at the same level. that you're You've become the child and you're disciplining a child so that pauses your zen moment while you're freaking out your child you're going to be freaking out everybody else in the house but trust me it works it works in classroom as well it takes a little longer because there's more commotion in the classroom but once that first student realizes that you're just sitting there pausing staring at everybody trust me everybody settles in don't underestimate the power of a pause so much more effective than uh, coming in and yelling. Um, you can say, okay, this is a, you can, I don't have to say it's a problem because now we're talking about homework. Um, just okay, we can't keep going like this. I mean, this isn't good for anybody, right? You don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. This isn't working. Right now I'm upset because we're wasting a lot of time. So you're going to give me a minute to calm down. Use that. Even if you're already calm, tell them, tell them I'm upset. This is, this upsets me. I'm frustrated because we go through this every day. So give me a minute. If you hear growling, <laughs> I do have a puppy. That's the puppy. Sounds like a dinosaur right now. Um, I have a 150 pound puppy with me today. <laughs> so <laughs> you may hear, hear some noises. That's not my stomach growling. That's the, the dog. He's probably feeling a squirrel outside. I don't know if you can hear him, but he's letting himself heard. Uh, so that, that 
time to tell them you're teaching them by doing that you're teaching them that how to process this in a healthy way i'm upset right now you're gonna have to give me a minute to calm down and then we're gonna talk about this or we're gonna find a solution so but you need to go back and find that solution but you're teaching them that right now my emotions are not allowing me to talk about this right now you're gonna have to give me a minute you take a minute and then we're going to reconvene and talk. You're teaching your children to identify their emotion and handle it in a healthy way. Okay, I'm not, I'm not in a good place right now. So let's just calm down and then teach them what can you do to calm down. All right, the kid is frustrated right now. Don't want to do the homework. You can't blame them. And but okay, what can we do? What works for them? They're old enough to do homework. They're old enough to tell you what it is that they can do to help them calm down a little bit. What are you teaching your child here? You're teaching them how to how to handle their emotions appropriately. So that's basically. So how do you apply that to homework, right? Um, so the first thing, every in every situation, whether it's they don't want to do their homework, they're hitting their somebody, they're uh, always fighting with their siblings, they throw tantrums out in public. You know, um, there's a hidden need there's always a hidden need and that's why you need to be calm to address that that's why you need to listen that's the first step you need to identify that need so you could tell your child what that is give them the words so that they can do it um most of the time that need is not what you think it is so for in the case of a child that doesn't want to do their homework, you honestly believe that they're either lazy uh, or they're just out to get you. They just want to piss you off. Like if they can make your life a mi miserable, that, that's their mission in life, right? Uh, when we're talking about discipline here, you have, to, you have to understand that it is something that it's recurring. It's not just one day I don't feel good. I'm really tired. We had swimming lessons, soccer, and now I'm at home and I got to do homework. I haven't eaten yet. Those, this is different. This is an everyday thing. Okay. Um, there's usually about three in general. Again, I'm generalizing and I'm not talking about learning disabilities or any kind of underlying challenges that some children or dis, um, differently able children could have. I'm just talking about a child that just doesn't want to do their homework, okay? There's three possible feelings there, and that's going to help you. The first one is they feel incapable. I can't do this. This is too hard. Or I can't do this. I must be the most dumbest person in the class, okay? So, and that's not their fault. I'm going to be the first one to say school doesn't help in that department. We place a lot of emphasis on homework, and we're not making the homework. Uh, we're not looking at how the child is learns when we give out homework. We just give out homework and the child needs to figure it out on their own. So uh, the first, most of the time is that the child finds it, the task too hard. And just think about you taking on a new project. If you have to, you're taking on a new project at work, you could feel overwhelmed going, where do I start, All right? Your child is feeling the same thing, but they don't have the tools to get there. You do. You have to teach them. So step down, take a breath. Your child's not out to get you. you your child's just overwhelmed, and you know exactly what that feels like, right? Um, the other one could just be that they need attention. They figured out along the way that if they don't do their homework, it's the, the time that you actually stop doing everything that you do in, uh, around the house. And now you're talking to them, you're yelling at them, but they have your attention. You taught them that the only way they can get your attention is if they do something negative, like not doing their homework. Uh, not doing the homework, we, we place, I said that earlier, but we put so much importance on homework that that is a sure way to get your attention if they don't do it. That's sure. So again, what are you teaching your child, right? Um, that's exactly how they're going to push your buttons on. I got some notes here because I didn't want to do. So we have these three, usually the three reasons that they hidden needs. So the first one is they don't feel capable. They don't, they don't know if they can do it. So you're going to take that time. If you identify that, it's like, okay, well, it's too hard. This is dumb. So, okay, why do you think it's dumb? Well, let's, let's work this out. You may not understand the homework. That new math stuff is, is a, 
I worked in French schools, there's new French as well. So that was a challenge. Um, map out what they need to do step by step. And even then the step by steps may be too much. So just a little bit at a time. Okay, so what do we have to do? Two plus two, week. okay, so let's start by writing the first two, <laughs> right? And then write the plus and then write the two. And then, you know, so the, I'm just giving that as an example, but it's like, okay, whatever it is that they've got to do, break it down step by step, but make sure that those steps are just short enough, little enough for your child to feel encouraged to go to, oh, I did this. Okay, so I can do the next one. And then you, this is where you make it your attention but in a positive way. Wow, you did this. Good job. You know, oh, wow, you got the next step. Awesome. Let's do this. What's the next step? Get, invest yourself in the positive side of it. And if they're going to feel like, wow, now I can do this. Now I understand. Now I can do this. If it was the second time, second reason is that they wanted your attention. Now they're getting your attention, but in a positive way. It may just take you five minutes to, to map out the steps. But it's, what is better? Doing the five minutes of explaining and helping them and giving them the tools or fighting for 45 minutes. That's where you need to vote to say, okay, listen, you have to do this work. I have some work to do. I have my own homework to do right now. So let's get this done. And then after that, let's take 10, 15 minutes together. Just like um, with this, the episode on the siblings that are bickering and then they're looking for attention or the child that is hitting uh, their sibling, they're looking for your attention. Give them that attention, but in a positive way. Let's, let's 10 minutes, you decide what we do and then you let them lead the uh, activity. You don't tell them how to do things, you let them do it. So then they know that they have your attention. If it's the third case, right? Um, then I didn't tell you the third case, the third case. I just realized that. I'm so sorry. First one is they can't do it. They think they can't do it. The second one, they want your attention. The third one is they they just want to rebel, right? They want to go against your authority. And they know that if they don't do homework, because we put so much importance um, in the homework, they don't, uh, this is the best way. They, how uh, powerless do you feel when your child absolutely refuses to do the homework, right? You can threaten them all you want, they're not budging. So if that's the third case, um, validate your child's emotion, play the uh, reverse psychology card on them. They wanna reach, they're, they're triggering you. They wanna reverse, it. it's almost, right? They're manipulating you. Um, don't take it as a bad thing though. This is just, they're frustrated. They don't wanna do this. They don't understand, it's boring. There's, they're not motivated. So if they're doing it to, to rebel, against you um just validate their emotion to say yeah you know what you're right you know i can't make you do the homework i understand i hated homework when i was your age that's it <laughs> your child can't do anything anymore they don't have that they don't hold that power over you anymore in fact i completely understand i hated homework you know you're the one who's gonna have to deal with your teacher tomorrow that's it. They can't get the attention from you anymore. And you've cut the, the power struggle. You know, you're the adult. Don't act like a child. You're the adult. Yeah, you're right. You know what? Go for it. Don't do it. I don't care. Don't say I don't care. <laughs> but it's, you just say, that's what they're going to hear. Don't you say you don't care. But that's what they're going to hear. Like, oh, shoot, I lost my ammunition now right? Take that power away from them. So that's how positive discipline can look. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to invest some time. It could take three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. But think about it. Your child is in school for how many years? If you invest those, that month of taking that five minutes to give the proper attention to your child in a positive way instead of fighting for years, right? Um, it's an investment worth taking, right? So that's what I have for you. If you have any questions, if you wanted more uh, detailed 
I'm, I'm very, I'm generalizing this because I don't want to make this a three hour seminar, but um, put it in the comments that there's specific situations I can go live on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever. And we can actually have an interactive conversation and go with more specific cases and more troublesome cases. I don't mind taking those on. I love challenges. Everybody else hates taking them, but I'll take them and help you. Every child is different. So there's no magic formula. We just have to talk about it, figure it out. Again, don't forget though, I go with your child's needs. Not Your needs are important too, but your child is acting out because they have hidden needs that are not met. You're acting out because you're a grown adult who hasn't grown yet. <laughs> So let's work together, shall we? Uh, if you have any questions, you can always contact me, whichever platform you're on. You can see where you can reach me. So I hope, again, it helped. And until next time, stay safe, stay awesome. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. And we'll talk soon.